There are crime stories and there are crime legends. The life of Jakira Barnes is one of those. Y'all trying to f us. I was like, damn. He liked her as a girlfriend? Yeah, he wanted to be her boyfriend. She just felt like he was trying to set her up. That's what she told me. She like, I think he's just trying to kill me. I love her, and I'm going to fight for her to have justice because I don't think it's fair that we're losing our kids being gunned down every day in the streets. It's still under investigation. What exactly happened Friday afternoon in the 6400 block of South Everhart? But neighbors say Bonnie and her friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started firing. When the bullet hit, it was so powerful, she fell on the steps. But if you read the actual document that came up in this Freedom of Information Act uh, uncovering, it basically says that, hey, the person who allegedly her was Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Buck. January 12, 2011, would be the day that changed Chicago gang member and alleged female assassin, Ja'Kyra Barnes, also known as K.I. Forever. It was a day she lost someone dear to her heart. Shondell Gregory, also known as Tuca, at a bus stop on 63rd and St. Lawrence in the Woodlawn neighborhood in Southside Chicago. 15-year-old Chanel Gregory was shot in the 500 block of East 63rd Street. The boy was on the street when a suspect got out of a vehicle and shot him multiple times. That gunman got back into the car and fled west on 63rd. The pain and hurt of his passing would sink her deeper into the already grief-stricken lifestyle she endured due to her affiliations. Ja'Kyra Barnes was a member of the SLT EBT set, which was renamed Tukaville in honor of their fallen comrade. The hit of Shondell solidified their bond as sworn enemies with the rival set Wick City, which would later be renamed Oblock. K.I. was enraged with a mix of emotions from the tragedy and was on a warpath for revenge. This allegedly led to the revenge hit of respected Wick City member Odie Perry, who was gunned down on August 10th, 2011, and subsequently succumbed to his injuries. This homicide was the reason Wick City renamed itself Oblock in honor of Odie Perry, just as STL EBT did for Tuca, infamous Oblock. Jaikira's next decisions were crucial to the events that led to her life being taken. Due to her taunts and posts online insinuating she was responsible for the retaliation hit, a target was placed on her back. Shakira, also known as K.I., posted pictures online with her holding Odie Perry's gun, which created the assumption in the minds of her rivals that she was the shooter. She would take things a step further, disrespecting the passing of Odie Perry and finding humor in a tragedy as a way to poke fun at her rivals. Coupled with hints by close gang affiliates like FBG Wooski, who also gave credit to KI along with another assailant, Butter, for Odie Perry's hit. She was made the face of the assassination, and her rivals wanted her life as payment. But now it was too late to turn back. Even the authorities were investigating her as one of the main suspects for the homicide of Odie Perry. KI, with all eyes on her, continue to fuel the rage of her rivals by purposefully using her Twitter platform to take jabs at their masculinity and disrespect their home, Oblock. But in doing so, she found herself in the crosshairs of one of Oblock's most notorious gangsters, Davon Bennett, also known as King Vaughn. The strange thing about what the two displayed online was their somewhat affection for each other, almost in a flirtatious banter kind of way. Then in subsequent tweets, they were at the throats of each other, and it was there you started seeing the rivalry rear its head. In hindsight, the twisted mentality of those living that lifestyle was seen in the documentary on Good Kyra Barnes's life, where they interviewed King Vaughn, who unbeknownst to them, was the alleged main culprit in taking her life. And in that interview, King Vaughn spoke as if he had emotions for her and wanted to engage in intimate relations. Yeah, I was trying to f her. I was like, damn, we f you and shit. To the interviewers and Gaikira's friends, 
who was also interviewed, King Vaughn wanted to be romantically engaged to Gaikira as her boyfriend. But to Gaikira, who knew the inner workings of the gang culture and the devious nature of the man she was dealing with, she thought that King Vaughn was only trying to set her up and take her life. He liked her as a girlfriend? Yeah, he wanted to be her boyfriend. She just felt like he was trying to set her up, kill her. K.I., even though having this feeling that King Vaughn wanted to take her out, didn't step away from the lifestyle she portrayed. Instead, she went deeper in. September 2nd, 2013, one of King Vaughn's affiliates, Jerome Wood, also known as J Money, was murdered in the 6600 block of South Rose Avenue in Woodlawn. K.I. would again take the opportunity to insinuate that she was the one responsible for ending the life of J Money. February 11th, 2014, she would take direct aim at King Vaughn in a tweet taunting him for losing his comrade while he was locked up behind bars. King Vaughn would give word of her disrespect and remind her of the person's lives he took in return that belonged to her camp. K.I. was poking at a bear and her time was soon at an end. April 11th, 2014, the day she would take her last breath came. That day she was up and about being who she was. By now, her name had spread through the streets as someone to be feared. She embraced the label and maybe that's what led to her recklessness that resulted in her life being lost. For whatever reason, K.I. decided to get on Twitter and announce her whereabouts publicly. Now, her rivals had her location. She was, as the crime world would say, testing their gangster to prove that they cannot harm her as she was more gangster than them. It turned out she was wrong. At that time, she was allegedly with her right-hand man and close affiliate, Butter. Her assailants would arrive to her location where they found her walking with her friend. They would brandish firearms, firing several bullets which collided multiple times with K.I. She would suffer injuries to her mouth, neck, and chest. A total of nine times on the 6400 block of South Eberbart Avenue. Eyewitness state K.I. ran and collapsed on the porch, fighting for her life. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started firing. When the bullet hit, it was so powerful, she fell on the step. Residents who do not want to be identified say Barnes fought to live, but had been shot at least nine times. Evidently, Akira Barnes was succumbing to her injuries at Northwest Memorial Hospital after trying her best to stay alive. Her time of passing was 5.43 p.m. In the aftermath, King Vaughn would become the main suspect in the homicide, but he was never charged for the crime. Unfortunately, Vaughn himself would meet his end after an altercation with rapper Quando Rondo outside a club in Atlanta named the Monaco Hookah Lounge. It was there that Quando's affiliate, Timothy Leakes, a.k.a. Lil Tim, shot King Vaughn while a scuffle between King Vaughn and Quando Rondo ensued. King Vaughn would be rushed to the hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. A rapper who uh, is among those who were shot and killed in a gun battle in downtown Atlanta with three others and uh, injured as well. It would be after both King Vaughn and K.I. lost their lives that documentary from law enforcement would bring to light details in the case of Guy Kira Barnes's homicide. According to the documents, it lists their main suspect in her case as King Vaughn. Apparently, the information was obtained when someone did a FOIA request, which is the Freedom of Information Act. This states that the public has access to information on the activities of the government and can request a copy of any document from a public authority, such as a government ministry, department, or statutory body. The documents obtained extended to 300 pages with numerous sections detailing how King Vaughn orchestrated the hit on K.I. The reports state that K.I. was with two other persons at 6451 South Eberhardt when a male in a gray hoodie and blue jeans approached their direction. The offender then brandished a handgun and began firing towards K.I. and her affiliates. It was in these documents it was found that Guy Kira wasn't the only one injured but all three of them were inflicted with gunshot wounds. The shooter then made their escape in a vehicle. The investigation revealed the one they pinned as responsible for pulling the trigger was Davon Bennett, AKA King Vaughn. It also stated 
the reason why he wasn't arrested and put on trial for the case while he was alive. Even though he was positively identified, law enforcement wasn't confident they had the evidence to prove that he was in fact the one responsible for the taking of Guy Kira Barnes' life. Two futures that could have been so bright, taken away due to the senseless lifestyle and culture of being in a gang and what comes with it. How many more until it's realized by the youth that there's no happy ending, just pain and loss? K.I. wasn't naive to the life she lived. She knew the risk and accepted the fate she knew was coming. In her mind, she was certain her time would arrive one day. But she found some solace in the fact that her name would be recognized as a real one in her passing. Such shallow reasoning to throw your life away. If only she saw the true worth of her life. If only they all could see the true worth of their lot and how much they would accomplish together rather than fighting each other. A promising girl who had so much ahead of her, but she became another statistic, detailing a youth that was swallowed up by the gang culture and left six feet deep. Rest in peace, K.I.